In the last session, we talked about Satan the Accuser, who is trying to destroy us with negatives. In this session, we're going to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. He is the Comforter who is healing and freeing us to live in comfort and joy and peace and gladness and kingdom realities. So let's take a look at some of the names of the Comforter. I'm going to suggest that all the comforting thoughts that line up with the names of the Comforter, Holy Spirit or Jesus, are coming from the Holy Spirit or Jesus. Um, first of all, the word Comforter. Let's take a look at that name. Um, he will give you another Comforter that he may be with you forever. John chapter 14, verse 16. The word Comforter is parakletos. It's one called alongside to help. That is what the Greek means. So. I've got somebody, you've got somebody inside of you, right next to you, called alongside to help you in everything. And you also have a destroyer trying to destroy you in everything, and you cast the, 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 the vote. Do I go with destroying thoughts or do I go with comforting thoughts? All right. So I have decided to only accept <laughs> comforting thoughts. Because when I accept destructive thoughts, I just get really mean. I mean, I'll lose my pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. I mean, so I'll lose that. Um, I'm very depressed. I'm very cranky. I'm very upset. I'm very angry, very mad, very judgmental. I'm not worth being around. I hate being around myself and people hate being around me. So there's no point in me living life that way. And I've chosen to, to not do that. So how do we create an impure heart and how do we restore our heart if, if it's become impure? Let's take a look at Psalm 73. This is an example from scripture of a guy who uh, starts with a pure heart um, and then he gets it messed up, <laughs> impure, and then he comes back to pure. So let, let's watch this step so we can see how this is done, all right? <laughs> In Psalm 73, verse one, truly God is good to Israel, to those to such as are pure in heart. Okay, got a heart full of faith, love, joy, peace, okay? Verses two and three, but as for me, my steps had nearly slipped for I was envious of the boastful and I saw, saw what, do he has a, has, have his eyes fixed on God? Nope. I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He's looking someplace other than at Jesus who has his right hand. He's looking at the wicked He's looking at their lives, all right? Which is not what we're told to do. We're supposed to fix our eyes on Jesus. And now he's going to allow envy in, okay? He, I became envious because he's looking at something other than Jesus. Verses four through 12, he begins to reason outside of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Voice of God is nowhere around. Vision of God is nowhere around. Him thinking on his own. And here's what he does. For there's no pain in their death. Their body is fat. They don't get in trouble like other men. They're not plagued like mankind. Therefore, pride is their necklace. The garment of violence covers them. Their eye bulges with fatness. The imaginations of their heart run riot. They mock and they wicked, wickedly speak of oppression. They speak from on high. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue prays throughout the earth. All right, so he... He's thinking outside of the presence and the revelation of the Holy Spirit, the wonderful counselor. And so now he's gonna move into self-pity in verses 13 through 16. <laughs> Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure. It doesn't pay to be a Christian because I just get kicked around, I'm poor, I'm sick. No, there's no value in being a Christian. And I've washed my hands in, 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 in innocence. For I have been stricken all day long, and I've been chastised every morning. If I had said, I will speak this, behold, I would have betrayed the generation of your children. So he's very depressed. He's into self-pity. He's into depression. He has lost his pure heart. Okay? He's not full of faith, hope, and love anymore. When I pondered to understand this, it was troublesome in my sight until... Okay, so now we're up to verse 16, Psalm 73, verse 16 through 20. And this is a beautiful phrase. Until I came into the sanctuary of God, then I perceived. All right, see, that's the answer right there. 
He spends time with his eyes not fixed on Jesus. He starts thinking without asking the Holy Spirit to guide his thoughts, and he goes into self-pity and destructive mode. Loses everything. Now he's going to go in the sanctuary of God. He's, he's going to welcome the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I, I need your insight. Because <laughs> uh, reasoning alone without you is really the pits, all right? And once he re gets in the sanctuary, he goes beyond reasoning to something called perception. Then I perceived their end. Now this is revelation knowledge. Perception is, is heart revelation. Instead of head reasoning, it's heart revelation. So he's gone to a deeper place. And here's what he perceives. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. They're destroyed in a moment. They're utterly swept away by sudden terrors like a dream when one awakens. O Lord, when aroused, you will despise their form. So this is God's revelation. God says, hey, don't look at just today. Come on, let's, let's look at the whole life here. When you look at the whole life, realize they're headed for calamity and destruction because they're I'm opposed to the proud, and they're on the pro my pride list. I'm opposed to them. They've got a really hard time ahead of them. It's all going to work out. So then he reflects on this whole experience he's just had. In verse 21 and 22, he says, When, I, when my heart was embittered, okay, skip the pure heart, got bitterness in my heart. When my heart was embittered and I was pierced within, then I was senseless and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. I was thrashing around, screaming, throwing a tantrum and a fit. That is Psalm 73, verses 21 and 22. So that's true. You know, when I forget that Jesus is here and, and I just start throwing a tantrum and saying, God, have you seen the government? I hate the government. I hate everything. And I'm just throwing a fit and I'm acting like a total beast. That's what he said. I was like, like a beast. Now he's going to come back to worship. Whom, whom have I in heaven but you? And beside you, I desire nothing on earth. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you will perish. You have destroyed those who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. I have made the Lord God my refuge, that I may tell of your work. Psalm 73, verses 25 to 28. Nearness of God. I've set the Lord at my right hand. I will not be shaken. I behold the Lord here. Okay? So as long as I'm beholding him here, I'm fine. My heart is pure. So here you find uh, the steps to wrecking your heart. <laughs> And um, you also find the steps to restoring your heart. St steps to wrecking your heart is to get your eyes off Jesus, start looking around, start thinking on your own without getting any revelation knowledge, start moving into self-pity, and then you're just mucked up. Steps back are come into the sanctuary of God, begin to worship again, say, Lord, I need to, your wisdom, listen to his voice, hear what he says, say yes to what he says, and you're healed. That's the steps down and the steps back. When I read this psalm and God gave me the revelation on it that I just shared with you, I made an ironclad decision in my life. <laughs> and it's a million dollar decision that I'm glad I made. And here it is. I will never reason outside of the presence of the Holy Spirit. I will never again reason outside of the presence of the Holy Spirit. If I'm not asking God for his input, if I'm not allowing, I don't have my eyes fixed on Jesus, I'm not tuned to flow and flow, flow is not guiding my thoughts, I'm not thinking. Because if I do think I know exactly where I'm going, I'm going to a hole in the ground and I'm gonna be really messed up. That was one of the really best decisions I've ever made in my entire life. Never reason outside of the presence of the Holy Spirit because it's gonna take you down. When he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. John 16, 13. Truth liberates. Jesus said, the words that I speak, and that word is, is rhema, the rhemas, the spoken words, the words that I have spoken to you, their spirit and their life. You want to come alive? <laughs> you want to have a good life? Listen to me speak. All right. So how about if we do a little confession here together? 
We can take some of Satan's lies and just bind them. And we can confess God's truth and picture it and speak life over ourselves. It's life and death in the power of the tongue. Satan says, you can't. Would you say, I bind that demon that says I can't. I bind that demon that says I can't. And let's confess God's truth together. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can you picture that and say that as you picture it? Let's say it together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> it's good to have a picture. You need to have a picture, need to have emotions, need to speak it with faith from the heart. And pictures is the center part of making it a heart prayer and a prayer of faith. Satan says, you lack. Well, that's a demon. So I say, in the name of Jesus, I bind that demon. Of course, I don't lack. Because the Bible says, Philippians 4, 19, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Can you picture it and say it? My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. These are nice things to post on the mirror and speak over yourself in the morning. You got to speak something over yourself in the morning. Got to think something, got to picture something. Satan says, you fear. I said, I bind the demon of fear. Be gone. Second Timothy 1 7, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Can we say it together? God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Demon says, you don't have faith to handle this situation. I say, I bind that demon. I command you to leave in Jesus name. Romans 12, 3, God has given me a measure of faith. Can we say it together? God has given me a measure of faith. Satan, a demon says, you're weak. <laughs> I say, I bind that demon in Jesus' name, leave. God says, in Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is a strength of my life. Can we say it together? The Lord is the strength of my life. So that demon says, you're trapped by sin. You're trapped by Satan. And I say, I bind that demon. You're a filthy liar. Leave. Because First John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Can we say it together? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Demon says, you're defeated. I say, shut up, you filthy lying demon. I am not. Be gone in Jesus' name. And I confess what God has said. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. God always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. Can we say it together? God always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. <laughs> really cool. Can't say that and be depressed, can I? A demon says, I don't know what to do. They say, well, that's a lie. Oh, that's a demon. So I bind that demon and say, shut up and leave. And 1 Corinthians 1.30, Christ Jesus is made unto me wisdom from God. Can we say it together? Christ Jesus is made unto me wisdom from God. How about if we say this? He gives me words of wisdom. Let's say it together. He gives me words of wisdom. Got to say something. That's a whole lot better than saying, I don't know. I can say, I do know. God knows, and I'm just going to ask him. And then I'll know. A demon says, I expect to get sick once in a while. He tries to get me to confess that. I say, I bind that demon. And I say, leave in Jesus' name. And here's what I say. By his stripes, I am healed. Can we say it together? By his stripes, I am healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5. A demon says, I'm, I'm so worried and so frustrated. He wants me to say that, to believe that and to confess that. And I say, in the name of Jesus, I bind that demon. I say, leave in Jesus' name. And here's what I'm going to say. I can cast all my cares upon him because he cares for me. Can we say it together? I can cast all of my cares on him because he cares for me. All right, 1 Peter 5, 7. And if I'm picturing these things, will I say it? It's very, very powerful. Because picturing is part of the heart. 
and we want to go to the heart level. So a demon says, I'm, I'm in bondage. Well, I can picture being in bondage pretty easy. <laughs> I say, in the name of Jesus, I bind that demon. I say, shut up and leave in Jesus' name. And here's what I'm going to confess and see and believe. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Can we say it together? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians 3.17 I'm free in Christ. I'm free in Christ. Thank you, Lord. A demon says, I feel so condemned. I say, no, I don't. You're a lying, filthy demon. Leave in Jesus' name. Here's what I say. There is no condemnation for me because I'm in Christ Jesus. Can we say it together? There is no condemnation in me because I'm in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.1 so we've already mentioned that the Holy Spirit will convict us without condemning us. And that's why there's no condemnation, because condemnation puts me down and says I can't succeed. Conviction frees me and says, of course you can succeed. Just do this particular uh, step of action as you go forward. Okay. The word convict is actually better translated convince. So the Holy Spirit is there convincing me of the right way in which I should go. Satan's always running roughshod over us, trying to dominate us, control us, destroy us. Holy Spirit never does that. He's a gentleman. He's entreating. He's inviting. He's always asking. Okay? So I don't accept domination on any level from anybody because it's demonic. Okay, the Holy Spirit's an edifier. It's, the uh, Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, one who prophesies speaks to men for edification. So that's to build up, okay? And uh, you and I, we've both been around people who when we're around them, we just, they build us up. They, they've got nice stuff to say, okay? That's because they're listening to the voice of the edifier and they're sharing that. And we've probably already been, been, been around people who tear us down. And that's because they're listening to the voice of the destroyer and they're speaking what demons are saying. So, man, I, I want to be careful <laughs> that when I'm around a person, I'm building them up. I'm speaking life to them. Another name for the Holy Spirit, he is an exhorter and teacher. One who prophesies speaks to men for exhortation. So the literal definition of exhortation is parakaleo in the Greek. And it's to call a person to the side to encourage them in a course of conduct, always looking into the future. And notice how close that word is to parakletos, which is the word counselor, so uh, comforter, which is the, another name for the Holy Spirit. Okay, So when we are exhorting people, the Bible is very clear how we do it. <laughs> we do it lovingly, uh, 1 Corinthians 13. We do it gently. Uh, Galatians 6.1. We do it with patience, 1 Thessalonians 5.14. We do it with great mercy, knowing that we've failed and been trapped in things too, so we understand that. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3. We do it with a desire to comfort the person, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 3. And the um, Bible says, I don't speak to condemn you, for you're in our hearts to die together or to live together. So man, if you're going down, I'm gonna go down with you because I'm, I'm connected to you and you're connected to me and I'm here to make sure that you don't go down because if you do, I'm willing to go down with you. You know, and, and I have heard that in the early church when people were excommunicated that a brother, another righteous brother in the church would willingly go with that one who was excommunicated to, to draw them back, to bring them back to righteousness. That's being willing to die together with them. My conclusion, <laughs> I just want to speak words of life. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only a word which is good for the edification according to the need of the moment, so I can give grace to those who hear it. So when I got married to Patty, I made that one of my commitments. <laughs> I shortened it down. If I don't have something good to say, I'm not talking. Okay, that was my commitment. So if I want to barf and throw up or say something mean, I'm just going to seal my lips until I get alone in the sanctuary of God and find out what he wants to say that's loving and kind, and then I'll come back and talk. So I'm not going to talk if I don't have something nice to say. Now that is another million dollar thing to purpose in your heart to do. 
because the people that you want to be nice to and you want to share Christ with mostly is that you start with your, your spouse and your children. You speak only words of life to them, to your children, your spouse. And then if you can do that well in your family, you have the right to go out and minister, to be an elder in the church and minister God's grace to others. But you got to prove that you got this character quality in your own family first before you're eligible to be an elder to the body of Christ. So in summary, we kind of said, okay, there's, there's three sources of thoughts. There's my analytical ones, there's demonic spontaneous negatives, there's Holy Ghost spontaneous positives. We sort those three out. We want to fix our eyes on Jesus, only receive spontaneous positives. I don't want analytical because I don't need Mark. I don't want spontaneous negative. I don't need demons. I only accept spontaneous, loving, comforting, encouraging thoughts that line up with the names of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The decision to do that is a million dollar decision. I encourage you all to make that decision. It's one of the great decisions of our lives. So I purpose to meditate on God's thoughts only. I purpose to abide in Christ. So as we close, how about some journaling questions? Four or five different ones. Lord, what do you want to say concerning demonic thoughts versus the voice of your Holy Spirit within me? Lord, uh, show me how I've allowed the voice of your Holy Spirit to speak words of life to me. And Lord, uh, where do I need to allow the Holy Spirit to speak more life to me? And final one, in what ways do I need to be speaking words that strengthen rather than pull down? So ask the Lord those questions in journaling. Give him a chance to speak to you. I'll share one of my journaling sessions, of journaling pieces as I close this. Mark, as a result of journaling, I have filled you with faith, hope, and love. I have removed your negatives. I have given you hope. I have restored your life, even as I restore the lives of all who hear my voice. Teach my church to hear my voice that it may be well with their souls. It is truly as simple as hearing and obeying. I have come to give abundant life, and those who come to me, they do receive. Come to me constantly. Lord, we just thank you for your words of life. That you speak life into us, that you heal and restore us. And Lord, I ask now that as each person journals, that you will speak life to them and remove the words of the accuser and teach them how to highlight on the words of the, in the words of the comforter. Thank you, Lord. Amen.